boys and girls. Uh, yeah, another evening back down the garage. And uh, as you can hear, Little Red is in the background out there warming up, which, well, can only mean one thing, right? We're going for a drive. She's back on the road. Uh, it's going to be Dean's first time back in the car since soon. Turbo's been on it. And uh, I've got the laptop with me and I've got reasonably spicy tune put in it. Um, now we are hitting the rolling road. I have booked a session for two weeks today um, to get Little Red on the rollers and uh, see how much power she is or is not making um, and fine tune some little bits and pieces on the rollers rather than try and do it all live. Uh, so it's quite exciting. So the plan is tonight, load the tune in that I've got, which is a bit spicier. Once we've got that sorted and I'm happy with that, we'll do a little bit of drivability stuff that's better to do on the road rather than on the rollers. Get it to a position where I'm happy that when we put it on the rollers, I've got two hours, four or five power runs, a bit of tweaking here, a bit of tweaking there, and, uh, and she'll be all good. So I'm going to get that warmed up. I'm also, very quickly, before we go out, I'm going to start the Nova because the Nova's been sitting, I'll show you. The Nova has been sitting under there since the last time we touched it. Um, the gear linkage broke. We got it. We got it ready for the MOT. It was good to go. We were rolling it out of the garage. Let me just turn this off. That's warm enough now. Uh, it was good to go. It was ready to go. Um, we were going to take it to the MOT for the second time, and it wasn't going to break down. Um, did find some rather alarming bits and pieces in the tune, to be perfectly honest, but. We'll, we'll go over that in another video. Um, I won't get into that today, but had quite a lot of timing in the table, to be honest. Um, so that's probably why I wasn't overly happy trying to idle. But since I have, since this has been moved out, we, we tried to roll it back out, or drive it back out, shall I say, to get to MIT, and uh, the gear linkage snapped. A little bushing popped out the gear linkage, which kind of put an end to it all, really. That was it. It didn't make it to break, to break horsepower show, BHP. Uh, but, we have got it booked in for um, Bromley Pageant, which is in end of next month. So uh, we'll try again. Um, but getting to the point, because I've you know I've uh, started waffling. Getting to the point, I have fixed the issue with the uh, I have fixed the issue that we had with the um, with the temperature sensor, engine temperature sensor. So the ECU does now know what the temperature of the engine is. Um, so in theory, I'm going to get I'm going to get in it. Hopefully, it's got enough battery to start. I'm going to get in it, right, and I'm going to see if it will start, um, because in theory, well, I need the keys tonight, that might help. In theory, now that it's got the temperature sensor in, it will know that it needs to add the after start enrichment, and it will know that it will need to add cold start enrichment, which I've checked the settings in the ECU the other evening, and uh, it should be about right, it should be about right. So we're going to give it a quick go and just see what happens. Um, and then by that time, Dean will probably be down the shop, and we'll jump in the fiesta, and we're going to... Uh, We'll go and play dodge the policeman again because every time we take that thing out we seem to find policemen which is, I think is very strange very strange but right let's pop a key in i'm waffling right, let's pop a key in let's get some power on we have a pump we have pressure right let's see what happens shall we will it start on its own stone cold Ooh. 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 That sounded like it was going to go then. Put me down there. Right, let's try again. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? No. And it's idling quite nicely, actually, as well. Um, didn't need any, oh, door's gonna hit me in the face. Didn't need any easy start down the intake for the first time in 14 years. Mint. Um, I did take quite a lot of timing out of it at idle. It had 30 degrees, 32 degrees of timing at idle. Um, actually, I had about 32 degrees of timing all over the map. It wasn't great at all. Um, but I took a bit of timing out of it, adjusted the fuel trims a little bit, and uh, it now sounds quite a lot more peppy. Than, uh, than it was before, and it actually sounds like it wants to go and actually make a, make a difference, so. Uh... Sounds a hell of a lot better than it did before. A little bit smoky, the after start enrichment's still on, but. Sounds a lot better. So, I need a few hours mapping this um, before we can take it for its next drive, but, 
turn it off because it's noisy. Um, so I need a few hours messing around with the map on this before we take it for its next drive. Um, but I am very happy now that it, oh, I can't get the key out of the ignition. I'm very happy now that it starts and it runs without having to have a cap taken off the intake and a load of easy squirt. Easy squirt, easy start. Shut, why won't it shut? Oh, that's because I've got the battery charger lead in the door. <laughs> um, yeah, so it starts, it starts up, it's happy days. Doesn't need an easy start down the, uh, down the, whoa, 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 whoa. So it starts, it runs, it doesn't need an easy start, sprayed down the, uh, the intake, so, uh, you know, my can of Hulk's easy start. This was full when I brought, when the, when I brought the Nova, when the Nova came into the garage, it's nearly empty now. <laughs> but, we don't need that anymore. It starts, it runs, it's a lot more peppy now that I've started taking timing out of it at the bottom end, messing around with the idle. It was about 10 o'clock at night when I was doing it the other evening. Um, you know, and you all know the neighbor situation, so uh, I didn't really get to uh, have a proper play with it, but now I know what the situation is and how things are going. Um, I need about an hour sitting there behind the laptop, tweaking a few things with the old ECU, and uh, yeah, she should be good to go for uh, for Bromley pageant, which is nice, which is nice. And I have now got a whole pack of new bushes to put in the linkage. So, right, I'm gonna stop waffling. I'm gonna get the spicy tune loaded up into the, uh, to the Fiesta, and uh, catch you guys in a second. Right then, boys and girls. Whilst, I, whilst I'm waiting for Dean to turn up, I'm going to go and make a quick pull. So I've loaded the new fuel map in. You'll notice I haven't got the dash on because I'm going to turn it on anyway, but I won't have the dash on because currently the laptop is attached to the uh, to the computer, sorry the laptop is attached to the Bluetooth adapter, for the mat obviously. Um, so there's some lights on, that's indicator, that's wipers, that's lights, there we go. Right, I'm going to go and make a quick pull and see what happens. I'm going to run a data log as well when we get onto the main road. Already it seems a lot nicer on the throttle, a lot happier down low, I made some changes to the real low down fueling. You have a bit of a dip in it. It has got a little bit of a dip there, but not as bad. What I'm interested on here, what I'm interested in is gonna be a third gear pull. That's what I'm looking for. Shifted early again. 
I drive diesels on the daily, so it feels a bit strange revving it all the way out to fucking seven grand. sitting there going through the logs so got to the point where so this is the beginning of the pool um, just here in this line so the white line is, your t is our RPM and the green line is your TPS so if we look at what we've got here I don't think we ever actually got to according to this we only got to 62% TPS uh, on that first pool so I don't I've, done, I've looked to see what's going on with that but we have got so we came in here so this is the beginning of the pool here, so I'm off the throttle here, about 3000 RPM, we're just in vac still, just about uh, 19 degrees manifold pressure. I did forget to turn the charge cooler on, on that run, so, uh, and we still only made 22.6 degrees of intake temperature, so that's fairly good to be honest, not that we're under boost for a massive amount of time, but. Um, so what we're looking for is, we're looking at this, this line here, which is my AFR. Um, ideally want this to be about 13 tailing up to about 12 under boost so um, as I jump into it we're 16 there so it went a little bit lean at that point so it probably needs a little bit more fuel putting in at that point there as we come up it starts to richen up a bit as we get into boost which is where we want to be we start coming across there the AFR table and we're starting to get into boost there that there we made 7.2 pounds no nine pounds of boost at the peak um, there before I changed gear so it made nine pounds of boost at nine pounds of boost the AFR was 11.9 uh, and that was at 6,300 in the fourth gear pool we obviously loaded the turbo a bit harder so we saw a peak of 10.6 pounds of boost um, that was at five so we made 10 pounds of boost at five and a half grand so still had Still got 1,200 RPM to go for, t for the limiter on that one, and we had an AFR of 13.4, which is about right. So overall, I'm gonna clean the fueling up a little bit, especially down low. Um, I'm gonna clean the fueling up a little bit. Dean's on his way, he's just texted me so he's on his way over. Um, and uh, we'll go out for another quick rip and uh, see what it's like, but it definitely felt fast, that's for sure. Right, see you in a second. I'm finishing off on my camp on my phone because the uh, the GoPro's gone dead, like I thought it would. Um, but we got quite a lot of mapping into it. I'll give it another couple of pulls, we'll do another data log, and uh, then we'll make our way back to the garage and have a little look. But the turbo is lighting a lot faster than it was before. It's pulling hard all the way through until I would say the rev limit of but until I shit my pants and fucking let out. <laughs> um, yeah, all in all, not too sad. I think we're, certainly the drivability is a lot better with those little tweaks that we've made. Um, as soon as we get a clear run, we'll have, a, we'll have another quick pull and then uh, make our way back to the garage and have a look at the data log to see what's what. Stop the laptop falling off. Right, let's have a quick check. 
I mean, you would have been able to hear it on the video. It was banging quite considerably, wasn't it? And then it stopped. Um, that wheel does look like it's poking out a little bit further than it used to, worryingly enough. Um, so Dean's just jacking the car up. We'll have a look. Wheel bearing shit itself. That doesn't sound good. What are you doing there? Rolling it backwards and forwards? Yeah. That sounds like... CV. Oh, CV or gearbox. Maybe, maybe we finally found the <laughs> the end of the life of the gearbox. Keep going, get it right the way up there so I can roll under and have a good look. Um, I mean, to be honest, we had some good pulls. That last that pull, third pull, that third pull on that carriageway, I stayed in it till 6-6. Six, six, which is the first time the first I've pass. ever got this car to 6-6 six, six before I've... <laughs> <laughs> Pussied out. I mean, I don't know what it felt like in the in the passenger seat, but it's the first time I've seen those nut, that that lips, that little blue light go. The first right time we've ever got into those top cells, but keep going. yeah, keep going, get it, get it right up there. Um, yeah, it felt good. It pulls really hard. I'm quite happy with this turbo. It's not so beforehand. It was quite lazy coming into boost. I think it was because it was so fat. Just as you get into that threshold. So just at that changeover, we took quite a lot out, didn't we, at that changeover, and then put a little bit in at the top because it had a bit of a lean dip. There was a lean spot. There was a lean spot right at the top, and there was a lean spot just where everything's coming on. So just flatten that out, and on that last pull seemed to be fine. Where the lean spot was previously, that was the third, third gear straight the way through to six six, and we were held in it fourth for a little bit. I don't know how far through fourth I got, but we ran out of road quite quickly. <laughs> That's the only problem with this. Where the ratios are so short and you go through the gears so quick, you run out of road just like that, right. didn't you? Like this thing, I mean, this, this is doing, even with the short ratios, top end of fourth, I think is about 94. Yeah, it's, and you get there yeah. like that. I think, um, I think I've given my escort. Top end of, well, bear in mind I've got a higher red limit on Yeah. Right? Top end of fourth is 110. So I, know, I know first gear will do 60. 60. 
Well, we only need first and second then. <laughs> Easy peasy. Right, okay, let's have a look underneath. Okay, right, here we go. Right, there's no massive puddle underneath, which is always good to see. There is nothing hanging out that I can see. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Go and plug my air conditioning in for me. Go on, go and plug the air conditioner in there. See, see if you can plug it in. What, your fan? Yeah. Oh, Fo is it hanging out? Follow the cable. I'll give you a clue, boys and girls. It's there. <laughs> right, there is two things then. There is two things, one, is it is not catastrophic and it is beautiful. The other is my air conditioning is broken. So what happened, boys and girls, is this did have a cigarette lighter on it. This obviously fell through the hole. It's gone through the drain, plug. Through the drain plug. See this one here? There's obviously there's one on the driver's side as well. It's fallen through and that was obviously bouncing up on the road and underneath <laughs> the car, like ding, 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 until such time, <laughs> until such time as it snapped off. I mean, it helped. It, it, it. Pull. It did, I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the plus side, now that that's snapped off, I guess I'll just hardwire that into a switch on the dash. Might, well. Might as well, now that it's busted. <laughs> well, I'm happy about that because it means there's nothing on the car that's broken. I was I was genuinely thinking it was probably it a horrible. gearbox or a CV had gone or something was flying around on the inside of the wheel. It sounded a little bit like when the brake caliper fell off that time, do you remember? Yeah, that's... That was my initial mm. thought. So, but, but it's all good. It's all good. Right, I'm gonna drop this down. So that's fucking amusing. Though. That is very amusing. That is very amusing. It's a little bit backwards this bit because I have actually we've already filmed the outro and then I realised I hadn't never shown you the log. Um, we were just going through it ourselves. So um, our third pull here then. So again, like we said before, up the top here, you've got uh, uh, what have we got here? Hang on. Right, so up the top, we've got RPM is the white line. Uh, we did get our maximum was 6508. Not quite 66, <laughs> but close enough. Um, this is the, the other thing that the throttle position only ever got to 32, 93.2%. So you might need to recalibrate. Might need to have a little mess. Up. I don't think it needs to recalibrate. I think the linkage is probably a little bit loose, I've maybe. Got that um, spare one at home. You have, yes. Have um, so I think we need to have a look at that. but. Uh, our maximum boost was 11.2. Made a little bit more than more. the previous pull. But then again, to be fair, we held in it. I held in it a lot longer. So it went lean. So we had 13, I saw 15.3 at 4100 RPM, 71% TPS. So if you look at that first pull, that third gear pull, I didn't go over 70% throttle. That was a fucking quick pull for seventy pull. percent throttle. That's a little bit scary. Where's the? What's you got cells on the right hand side, haven't you? Yes, yeah, so if you watch where it was. So, so where, where... our lean spot there, right? Is yeah, so as we're transitioning. That's in that batch of six cells. Yeah, so as we're transitioning through the there, spot. fat as it came on. Like, what's that number there? That cell was that still fifty? Yeah. So it's where. So we've got 57, 52, 62 in there. That whole range there probably wants to fatten up a little I bit. Did put that all up to sixty two. On the last on the burn, it should be on 62. Got into so this is fourth gear. So as we got into fourth, we run through at to be fair, the whole way through fourth gear, we hold 12, 12, 7, 12, 8 through fourth, and then it just richens right up at the top, which is probably where we peaked in boost. Yeah. So just as we crept over to the 11.2, we started to creep into the 11s on the AFR, which is fine. That's, do you know what we didn't look at, to be perfectly honest? And I'm going to add this in quickly so we can see. Two cycle one. Oh, we're on the limit of these ejectors. <laughs> see it on the table roughly where you are, aren't it? 97.5 duty cycle. And it didn't go lean, so there's obviously so still a little bit more in them. But, but that's but that's once again that's right at the top end. It is so yeah that's a where I still I'm, I'm saying eleven that's pounds still of boost. At eleven pounds of boost, six thousand five hundred RPM. 
and we're we, starting seven percent. We are at ninety-seven point five percent duty cycle at eleven percent AFR. All right, Dean's gonna go and pull the bonnet pull. I really need to put a better bonnet pull in there than that. I mean, it works, but we need a better bonnet pull. Let's have a quick look under here and see what we've got. Uh, so, after going all the way to 6.6, a few times, well, 6.6 once, but after a good few pulls, all my boost pipe work seems to still be in place. Turbo is still in place. It's very warm under here, but it's all still in place. Wastegate is still on. That didn't fall off this time. It's always a good sign. Um, everything seems to be where everything should be. Lovely job. I do like it when we get to the end of a video and the car's in one piece and there's nothing extra to, uh, to do. Cool. Well, do you want to say it? Like, comment, subscribe, and see you on the next one. There we go. Ta-da.